Hello Accounting 101 students. One of the main topics in Chapter 2 is the classified balance sheet. And we will go over how to prepare the classified balance sheet using our end of chapter practice exercises 1 and 2. And you can find these exercises in our Chapter 2 online participation. The link can be found in our modules area as well as the assignments area. And once you open the link, you will see the instructions for online participation, and you will scroll down to open up our online participation exercises. In question one, we are provided with a list of financial statement items for Chin Company, which includes the following. Chin Company has accounts receivable, and accounts receivable represents the amounts that our customers owe our company for the goods and services that we have already provided. We hope that our customers will pay us soon. Typically for accounts receivable, many companies allow 10 or 30 days or even 60 days for their customers to pay. Next, we have prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance is a prepaid expense, which means that we are paying for this expense prior to receiving coverage. So for insurance, we typically will pay six months or a year in advance, and every month we will have coverage for that period of time and reduce the amount that we have prepaid. Next, we have cash. Cash represents money in the bank. So most companies will have the majority of their cash in a bank account. Then we have supplies. For supplies, this may include items such as photocopier paper, pens, and post-it notes. And then we have debt investments. And in their problem, it is specified as being short-term debt investments. So these are investments in other companies that are relatively easy to sell and convert into cash. In this problem, we will be preparing the current assets section of the balance sheet, and it's important to list the items in proper sequence. So the sequence for the classified balance sheet will be the order of liquidity, which means how quickly can we convert the asset into cash. So to start this, we include our header for the section, which is going to be current assets. And then the first account we would include, because we're listing our accounts in the order of liquidity, is cash. So after we type in cash, we will include in the dollar amount. So the dollar amount that I have in my problem is 10400 then I'm going to scroll down and complete the remaining sections of the classified balance sheet. After cash, we will include debt investments. So our debt investments are short-term investments in this problem, and we're going to include these right after cash because we can easily convert these into cash. So in my problem, I need to look at the dollar amount and include this in the appropriate field. After cash, we can include accounts receivable. And accounts receivable represents the amount that our customers owe us for the goods we have provided or the services we have already provided. So in this problem, I will scroll up and see that the dollar amount for accounts receivable is $14,000. And I will look to see what remaining accounts we have left. We have prepaid insurance and we have supplies. Because supplies are used in the short term Typically, companies are not going to purchase so many supplies that they would have supplies for a very long period of time. We will go ahead and include our supplies account next. 
And right after supplies, we will include our prepaid insurance. And one of the things that is important to note in Wiley Plus assignments is to make sure that you include in the account title that is used in our textbook. These are the account titles that are typically used in financial accounting and business. So you do wanna use the specific account titles. And also from the drop down menu, if you can select this full account title, um, then it's less likely that Wiley will mark you incorrect if there was uh, misspelling or formatting issues. So now I'm just going to include in my dollar amounts for each of these accounts. And after I include in all of these current asset accounts, I will add them up to get to my total current assets. So it's a good idea to have a calculator handy in this class. So you will simply add up each of these dollar amounts. In my problem, I have 39,000. And once you reach to the end of this problem, you will submit your answer. I wanted to point out that I was not marked incorrect for not having the dollar sign. Um, Wiley does want um, particular formatting in some cases, but something like a dollar sign is not necessary to include in this problem, okay? Um, because it's already known that these are dollar amounts. So now we're going to go ahead and move to the next question, question number two, which is also focused on preparing the classified balance sheet. So in this problem, we are given several additional accounts. We have these items taken from the assets section of a balance sheet. And the dollar amounts are in millions, but you do not need to add in any extra zeros or do any conversions um, for the purposes of including the dollar amounts in Wiley for this specific problem. We will be preparing the assets section of the classified balance sheet, and we're going to list the current assets in the order of liquidity. So when we look at our fields, we will first start off with noting that the balance sheet is prepared at a specific point in time. Because the accounts will have various balances throughout a period, our balance sheet is going to tell us about the company's financial period status at a particular point in time. So for example, we would have December 31st, 2017, and as of 11.59 p.m., we wanna know how much does the company have in cash, for example. So our current assets section, we'll start off with the header for current assets, and the first account we will include here will be cash. And I will look at the accounts that we're provided with. And typically, all of the balance sheets that we have in our introductory accounting class will include in cash. So I'll include in the dollar amount. Next, similar to the prior problem, I will look to see if the company has any short-term debt investments. So not all companies will have short-term debt investments, but if they do, they will be easily converted into cash if we want to convert this. And we can include this next into our classified balance sheet. After debt investments, I want to see what accounts I have left. Typically, companies will provide goods and services to their customers on account. So accounts receivable would be expected from most of our customers, especially in our introductory accounting class. You want to include in accounts receivable. And you wanna make sure that you choose accounts receivable 
which is the amount that we expect to receive from our customers, which is different from accounts payable. So in our data, we want to see what accounts we have left. We have inventory. Those are the products that we're going to be selling to our customers. We have notes receivable. So notes receivable represent loans. So we have allowed other third parties to borrow money from us. So we want to look at the date that they will be paying us back. If they're going to be paying us back before December 31st, that means they'll pay us back within a year. So I'm going to include in the short term portion of the notes receivable next. And right after notes receivable, I will include in inventory. The amount of notes receivable that will be due or paid to us after December 31st will belong in the long term section. So we're going to go ahead and complete these fields in our problem. So after accounts receivable, we have the short term portion of the notes receivable and I'll include in the dollar amount followed by inventory. Those are the goods that we are selling to our customers. And then we're going to arrive at the total current assets. And you'll take some time to do the math here. And after you've done the math, you'll move on to our next section. So I'm typing in 13309. Moving on to our next section, we have our long-term investments. And within our long-term investments, we have the remainder of the notes receivable. And after we have the remainder of the notes receivable, we'll move on to the property plan and equipment section. Within property plan and equipment, we will look to see that we have buildings. And on that building, we need to record accumulated depreciation. Because we don't want to record the entire cost of the building in one year, we allocate the cost over numerous years and that's referred to as depreciation. And you'll learn a little bit more about depreciation in this chapter and the next two chapters, as well as chapter nine. For now, we just wanna know that accumulated depreciation is subtracted from the amount of the buildings. And we'll include in those amounts into our fields. So I'll type in buildings less accumulated depreciation on those buildings, and I'll include in the dollar amounts as well. So the amount of the buildings less the accumulated depreciation on the buildings gives us the subtotal that is noted on the right side. Then we have our section on our intangible assets, and our intangible assets will include our patents, that are noted at the top of our problem. So when we look at our data, we will include in the amount for our patents. And this will be the last account that we'll include before we reach our total assets. So our total assets include our current assets and our long-term assets. And you want to take some time to do the math here. I get 61,087 for the total assets. So I hope from watching this video, you have an idea of what the accounts are for the partial balance sheet and what section each of those accounts belong in. And you will add up the total current assets and then you will add up your long-term assets to get to your total assets. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.